exactly. Um, we were talking AI um, just before the break there, and and it never has it been a better time really to talk about AI than the the AI Soul Summit. Um, I, I was talking to my producer earlier on and saying, surely the genie is out of the bottle. It's like trying to say, let's now police the internet. Let's now control the internet, right? There's no, there's, there is no way of doing that. There are too many players, too many people. It can't be done. Are we too late with AI? What did they say at this summit? Well, I was reading some of the literature, Petri, that came from the summit, and I saw some definite positives. For a start, they're renewing this commitment to push for AI that, in their words, is, quote, human-centric, trustworthy and responsible. So that's good. Um, and the fact that other nations like the US and Japan have followed the UK's lead in establishing what they're calling AI safety institutes, which are set up to actually test AI models before they're released onto the market. Um, and setting limits for AI is what that's all about. Um, sadly, recently there was something like uh, five new AI models released and only one of them was tested pre-release in the UK's institute. So we've got a way to go with that. But for me, the bigger mission is still that there's been no mention of any attempt to try and find international treaties or agreements on the ethics that should guide AI mm. and its development. I think even casual observers now of technology is saying AI should be regulated. It should be regulated now before we lose control over it. And limiting AI should ultimately be the, the responsibility of governments, not AI developers. I mean, the future of AI can't be left up to market forces because even now these models are emerging that are not always well tested before they're released onto the market. So unless governments can agree on ethical standards, any laws we make won't be able to withstand the changes that are coming with AI and the use by some governments of AI to abuse human rights or even develop autonomous weapons. So we've got a way to go but we need to be cautiously hopeful about it. The, the, the point that I was making really was that, the, you know, laws are only obeyed by law-abiding citizens. Rules are only obeyed by those people who obey rules. AI uh, ethical guidance or, or limited limitations will only apply to those who have good ethics and understand the limitations. The codes are out there. There are bad players in the world. So we've got a situation here where people can develop non-friendly, non-human supporting, uh, pretty much evil AI sitting at home in their grey underpants. So, you know, is it too late because people have already got this techno? I mean, Elon Musk a month ago wanted to release a whole new tranche of information about building your own AI systems. There are people out there who already know how to do this stuff. Yeah, it's true. Um, you could argue the same, of course, with things like nuclear weaponry, although you can't build, as you say, a nuclear weapon in your in your underwear in your bedroom. <laughs> exactly. But, but, but there are bad players out there mm. who could get access to the materials. If they were allowed, they would go ahead and do it. Um, I think in the case of AI, what we need to be doing is saying, yes, look, that can happen, it can get worse, but we need to be engaged, we need to be on the front foot, we need to set rules, yes, for those who will obey them, but in the process of doing those, we will set up systems where it's harder for people that have malevolent intent to purchase the sort of materials they need to build a decent AI. It's not as easy as as one might think. But there's, to the build dark, really there's a dark web, isn't there? I mean, people can buy it, literally, I mean, apparently you can buy it absolutely anything so it's not you know the the tech what i'm saying is that the, the code the technology the wherewithal is already kind of out there to be built upon and i just wonder if if we've blindly left it far too late the genie's out of the bottle well i would i uh, there's some truth in that but i i would argue still that the big players when it comes to AI models and real revolutions in AI are big tech corporations. They don't tend to be individuals, even talented individuals in countries like the United States. It tends to be the bigger organizations. And that's good and bad. Monopolies are not necessarily a good thing because they can squash innovation. Mm. Uh, but on a positive side, it, it means that there's less access to, those, to, to the foundations of those new AIs in other areas or by other people. And for that reason, laws, as long as those manufacturers are willing to obey the law, 
we have a shot at getting ahead of the curve when it comes to the possible misuse. And I think it's going to take us time to do that. It'll be trial and error, but some foundational principles need to be agreed really quickly. Mm. Um, I was thinking again the other day of Isaac Asimov's laws of robotics. Uh, they're fictional, of course, but they come into play now with AI. Mm. One said, you know, an AI must not injure a human being or allow a human being to come to harm. Another said uh, uh, an AI must obey orders given by a human being. And another one said an AI can protect itself and its own existence as long as doing so doesn't conflict with those earlier two laws. So they're just very basic statements and we need something much more comprehensive. Yes, I mean, that. because if we're saying AI mustn't injure a person, we're going to have, or you know, apparently autonomous cars that will be making a decision between running over a pregnant woman and a 70 year old man. So we're not telling them not to do any harm. We're telling them to harm certain people, but not other people. Do you see what yes, I mean? So there's already, I, I a, a, you know, this mushing of, uh, of attitude. There is absolutely. And this is why regulation on its own isn't enough. There have to be discussions about the principles behind the regulation and they have to happen quickly. And we've been pushing this for a few years now, mm. these all embracing, you know, bringing in so many different types of professions to talk about the ethics that ought to drive technology in general, but particularly AI. Um, if we don't do that, the laws that are made won't be robust or comprehensive enough to deal with some of these rapid changes and challenges we're coming we're going to see coming down the road with new forms of AI. Uh, just, just while we're talking about AI, AI lies. New research shows that AI can, for various reasons, deceive us. I mean, already, if it's already lying to us, um, I, I mean, why are we even trusting in this technology? Well, I, I said to someone the other day, it shouldn't really surprise us that AI models can lie for three, uh, for, for at least two reasons. One is that technology itself is amoral. It's we, the human agents, mm. that decide how we build it and use it. Um, and studies have shown, as I said before, that there are biases that it picks up from human programmers, among other places. Again, most of that's coming from human sources. So our flaws are being passed on to machines, including our potential for deceit. Machines lie because humans lie. Um, and the second point is that most AI models are developed by very large tech companies. And their primary motivation is competing for market share, creating profits. So they sometimes cut corners, rushing products to market before they're fully tested for ethical behavior. So in 2019, we found that we, uh, in one MIT study, facial recognition algorithms released by people like Microsoft had higher rates of error when identifying people with darker skin tones. Another study by Stanford, if I remember correctly, discovered that AI could be biased against people with disabilities. So big tech doesn't always take enough time to think about the ethical behavior that can be produced or traduced by um, its AI. And those tech groups shouldn't be left alone to map out the future of artificial intelligence. No, and they should, well, they shouldn't be left alone to map out the future of ethics either. And most governments shouldn't either. Um, just very quickly though, uh, good news for AI, and it really is doing some sterling work in medicine, uh, and, and AI now to help cut out cancer waiting lists. This is exciting. It's very exciting. Um, for, as you say, for all of our concerns about AI, we have to keep a focus uh, on innovation too, mm. based on this cautiously hopeful, proactive mindset that I believe in. Um, research suggests that AI models are better at identifying certain types of cancer than human specialists, partly because they can take in so much more data mm. so quickly and analyze it um, faster, more accurately. And that can lead to things like much more personalized treatment plans. Um, we'll need humans in the loop, of course, because for one thing, uh, only humans can empathize with the suffering of other humans. So we need the therapeutic side of medicine, and that requires human doctors. Um, but it's a good example of how AI can augment rather than replace the skills of yeah, a human professional. It certainly does. Mal, um, always a pleasure. When we set up our gang, we will have our own donuts and we're not going to offer them to anybody else. Uh, Mal Fletcher, the futurist, um, absolutely fascinating stuff.